A meeting has been held in the town. One of the men that seems to be the leader says that they are headed to the Kamasunda Theater, which is 200 years old. Their leader, Machin, says that they are going there to find something that will allow them to do what they are meant to do. Orphan, the moneylender, is continuing his journey with his friends, Magic and Clayum. They go through so many troubles and fight many battles. They are resting in a forest, fighting over the last piece of steak, when they hear someone scream. Orphan decides to ignore it, saying that all they got on this trip was trouble, so he wants some peace. But when Clayum says that they might get food in return for helping someone, he instantly agrees. When they reached the place, they heard screams, and they found a lot of people had died there, while the monsters looked like flying dogs were eating them. Orphan manages to fight the monster that comes their way with his sorcerer powers. A near-death person tells them that their boss Lady Machin is inside the theater and asks them to save her. They go inside the theater to find the lady fighting with a robot to save her last man. Machin's companion falls into a large pit, and she wants to find him. Orphan and his friends try to stop her, but she is determined to go down. When she finds that they are going to Kimluk, she offers to help, as she knows the town and will guide them, and in return, ask Orphan to go down with her as she is afraid of heights. When they reach down, they find that the man has died from the fall. Orphan asks Machin how much she knows about the place, to which she answers that she only knows that this place was built 200 years ago, to show a play demon came but was shut down after the king came and watched the play. After walking for a while, they encounter the doll that has to lure them in. They mostly Orphan and Machin try to fight it, but during the fight, everyone else except Orphan suddenly disappears. The doll asks him if he is the one seeking the truth about the angel and the devil, and says that he shouldn't have brought humans here. The doll says that the demon king will decide if they are worthy of answers and disappears. Orphan goes further, and after a long fight with the dolls and the flying dogs, in which he finds his friends, he finally faces the demon king. He tells him about some kind of curse, in which sorcerers will be taken back to their powers. He says that this place was built to warn sorcerers and it has done its work. Suddenly the building starts to collapse, without giving them a chance to escape. Luckily, Orphan wakes up alive with his friends and finds a letter beside him saying that he should at least save himself next time. Later, he finds that Machin is a death instructor who is supposed to kill sorcerers, but due to their deal in Clayum, saving her during the battle, he is safe for now. Orphan and his friends reached Machin's place. Magic asks Orphan to train him to be a sorcerer. Orphan is very strict with him, and says that he will have to train in that way, if he doesn't want to die in a battle. As he is done training him, Clayum comes and tells him that the old man is calling him. The old man is talking to Machin and asks her if she is planning to kill Quo using Orphan. She says that they have to try because the situation for the people outside the holy city is getting worse. When Orphan arrives, Machin leaves, giving both of them a chance to talk. The man warns him to not go to Kimlik or he might die, but Orphan says that he made up his mind and he doesn't care about death as he knows how to fight it as he faces it often. Later, Machin takes Orphan with him to go into the holy city. She asks him to stay low, because only a few people can enter, and all the defense system is to keep sorcerer blood out. As they are about to enter the city, the people who are trying to get in for a long time stop them, and a fight breaks down, which forces Orphan to use his powers. After the explosion, Orphan wakes up only to find the man who started the fight taking care of him. He instantly gets angry and goes to attack him, but his friends stop him and say that he started the fight, but he was also the one who saved them. The man, Leniod says, is also a sorcerer and wanted to secure Machin. He says that he works for someone from the royal capital, but he can't reveal their identity. The woman in black is also another sorcerer and was following Orphan from the start. She was the one who saved them from the theater and left the letter for him. She is sitting in her room when a reporter comes. Two little children tell her that there was some sorcerer at the wall of the holy city, and now there are guards everywhere. She puts them to sleep, and then reads the world scripts written by demon kind. She finds that the dragon was the one who discovered the sorcerer's powers and found sorcerers, but the gods attacked them and wiped out their continent. They built a barrier on their new land, but there was a crack in it and they got attacked by it, so a sorcerer named Oriole sealed the crack, but she had to give her life for that. The lady says that the script is half completed, and she had to find something else to complete the story. Meanwhile, Laniode says that he knows a secret way inside the city, and takes them to a dry well in an inn. Before Orphan can go, a man there says to him that he should never let his guard down with Laniode as he doesn't trust him ever. In the underground passage, they follow Laniode in the hope of reaching the cathedral. Laniode says that the guards may have known about this place, so they should hurry. He says that this place is not well taken, so they have to be careful as it can be completely flooded. Before they could walk further, Orphan asked them to stop as he heard something. They were shocked to find that Laniod had already known about the risks. Before they could do anything, the passage got flushed by the rainwater. When Orphan woke up, he couldn't find his friends anywhere. He calls for them, but instead of them, Laniod shows up with royal guards. Orphan says that his friends were too young and must have gone further by the water, 
and that leaves Orphan alone to fight with them. But Orphan is not as shocked by the revelation, and says that he had known from the start that Laniote was not a sorcerer, because he had used a strong spell, and he would have noticed if he was a sorcerer. Laniote further reveals that he is a death instructor, and would do anything for his gods. Orphan fights with Laniote, and even though he gets injured, he manages to wound Laniote badly. On the other hand, Magic wakes up injured and passes out with Clayum by his side. When he gets surrounded by the guards, he accidentally manages to use a spell, and finds that he can use sorcerer powers if he can put his mind to it. When Magic finds Orphan, he is lying beside a dead Laniote, and is very injured. Orphan is very shocked, and keeps murmuring that he has to kill him, as he has no other choice. He denies himself and says that the man was a mere human, and he should not have killed him because he is a sorcerer, and he is supposed to have more control over it. Magic says that it was not his fault and tries to go near him to look at his injuries, but Orphan accidentally hits him. Magic gets angry with him and says that he should not treat him like an amateur because he has been suffering too. He asks him to look at Cleum. But as he goes to check her injuries, he passes out. When he wakes up, he is dragged by Magic, who tells him that he healed him using powers. They try to figure out a way to get out when suddenly Cleum disappears. They soon find her being led by her cat. As they follow her, they reach a place where a lot of skeletons are spread with the smell of death. They find that the bodies are thrown there from the top, and they will have to climb up. The cat takes Clayum up, leaving Magic and Orphan behind. Orphan tries to use some spells but fails as he keeps seeing Laniote's injured face. Magic says that he will do it and instantly causes a spell, but falls back halfway. He couldn't move for a while, which angers Orphan and says that Magic will not use any spells again because he doesn't know how to control them, and it is causing him to get weaker. Finally, they reach the top by climbing the walls. When they reach the top, they find a dungeon in Clayum, who is now back to her original condition. Clayum says that she saw a dead person, but he just disappeared. The dead person comes out of the shadows and says he was asleep. The person is Saluma, who is a death instructor, but as he rebelled, just like Machin, he is kept here. Saluma says that they have to get out of there before the night ends. Magic fights the guards as Orphan still can't use his powers. As they keep walking, Orphan passes out again. The girl in black reaches the front of the cathedral and says that she finally made it here after following her master's footsteps. She had promised herself to find the truth, even though she would have to lose her powers in her life. Orphan finally wakes up as the other three are sitting around him looking at him. They say that he looks bad, but he stands up and starts walking. After walking for a while, they reach a little staircase. Sani would tell them that they will reach the lowest floor of the cathedral after climbing these stairs. When they reach the top, they are surprised to see that the guards are waiting for them there. Kuo is the one who is leading the guards. He asks Saliwa what he is doing with the sorcerer. Kuo tries to say that when Saliwa was captured he said pretty bad things about the Kimluk, but Saliwa denies that and says he only said if they continue to fight with everyone outside of the Kimluk, they will eventually be destroyed. He says that as long as Kuo is pulling pop strings, you will have to eliminate him. Saliwa tells Orphan that he will take care of Kuo and that Orphan should fight the guards as they don't know he can't use his powers. And they are terrified. Claymo accidentally exposes Orphan. But when Magic loses consciousness after causing a spell, it gives him the motivation to fight. During the fight, he finds that one of the guards is his sister Azalee, the girl in black. Kuo is very strong with his powers, and Saliwa tells them if they break these doors he will be powerless. After a long fight, Azalee manages to break the door, but they are shocked to see a woman hanging in the air, with a hand holding her neck. As Orphan goes to check it, Kuo shoots him, which causes him to fall into a pit, and Kuo happily shouts that he finally killed Orphan. They try to fight Kuo. He himself says that they can't harm him, as long as he is wearing his armor. Azalee gives a little box to Clayum, and asks her to get out of there with Magic and Salua. Kuo kills all the guards, saying they saw something that was supposed to be hidden, and says that he will kill Azalee too, so she can repay her sins. Before he could attack her, she flew and went into the water pond. Orphan fell into. When other death instructors come to ask for intruders, Kuo says that all of them are gone. Clayum appears in the place Azalee was living in and meets the children. She asks them if they are still in Kimluk, to which they say yes. Soon, Magic and Salua woke up, and they all decided to go to the cathedral again. Salua says that he will take them to his brother. When they reach there, his brother is waiting for him. Salua tells his brother that sorcerers are still inside and Quo has lied to him, and there is something big going on. Salua and his little team also join Magin and fill her with all the events. As they were talking, the dead body of Salua's brother, Leniot, fell from the roof. Kuo finds that His Holiness is actually the founder of the sorcerer Aramankar. Azalea pulls Orphan out of the water and saves him. When he wakes up, he finds that his gun wound is gone and Azalea has saved him. Orphan remembers the lesson from his childhood, where it was written that Oriole stopped the goddess's invasion with her life. 
and she is the one who is holding her neck. Soon, Azalee wakes up. She says that as she comes back to her form, she remembers all her classmates and thinks she is the only one who failed. She says that she was supposed to inherit her master's knowledge, but she killed him before that. She then asks Orphan why he lost his powers, to which he tells her that she never wanted to kill anyone because it meant he had lost control and eventually would have to kill her because she is a white sorcerer. He wants her to go back, but she refuses. As they are fighting, Quo comes there with His Holiness. His Holiness tells them the whole story and says that Oriole stopped the goddess who had entered through the crack after sending several monsters. The goddess is the one holding Oriole's neck. He says that he accidentally encountered the goddess and became the founding sorcerer of the human race. He tells them that one day Oriole's powers will run out and everything will be destroyed. So he wants to kill all the sorcerers and is finding their master, Cheldman, as he is the only one that can kill him. He also tells them that the final audience is where a person can see Oriole's memories, to which Orphan reveals that he witnessed that one underwater. He was disappointed to know that their master had died. Ko says that this is enough explanation and attacks them. When Ko attacks Azalea, Orphan tries to use his powers but fails again. Suddenly, the two little children literally drop into the battlefield, which angers Orphan, pushing him to use his powers. With his powers back, Orphan heals Azalee, and they both fight against Quo. As they are fighting Quo, he says that their time is over as Carlotta brings Orphan's friends inside the hall, whom they had taken hostage. But Quo couldn't stay happy as Carlotta decided to betray him. Not wanting to accept his defeat, he throws a sword at Oriole, saying that it will weaken her and the goddess will easily come and destroy the world. Azalea finally throws the fireball at him, burning and killing him. The goddess's arm moves a little, which causes the whole cathedral to shake. Azalea takes it upon herself and says that the sword she has can turn someone into spirit form, and she is the only one who will survive in that form. So she wants to use it on herself and help Oriole. Orphan refuses to help her and even tries to stop her, but before he can reach her, she stabs herself with it, turning into spirit form and closing the creek. Quo, who is taking his last breath, says that the vile sorcerer's powers are unlimited and creek will open again one day and their goddess will win. He gets washed away by the flash flood. Salyu and Machin go away because the church is finding them, while Carlotta becomes the new head instructor. Orphan also continues his journey with his friends.